Hello everyone, it's good to be back. Welcome to another video on the Code Angle YouTube channel. Um, today we'll be looking at tables, and in fact, I have it in mind to create um, a lot of tutorials in the coming weeks, which will be about data tables. But as at this point, I want to start at the simplest stage possible, so that's why I'll be making use of React Bootstrap table and then the JSON placeholder to display data in the front end. So what I intend to do over time is with the data tables, I intend to look at there will be things like um, filtering and paginations and other things like that, which are usually included in data tables. But for now, for today, all we'll be doing is just um, displaying data using the React Bootstrap um, tables. So let's get started. So first things we need to do is to um, install um, Axios and also install um, React Bootstrap and also Bootstrap. So I have already um, installed this and I believe also you've created a, a React project using probably um, Webpack or using um, Create React app. I use Create React app for this particular project. So what you can do is um, go to your um your terminal and then type npm install axios let me show you i've already installed it on my system so you can just do npm install axios and for the react bootstrap you can just go to the react bootstrap website and go to get started then you see um on that get started this instruction which is npm install react bootstrap and also bootstrap so once you do that I think those are all you need, all the things you need to install to follow through with this um, tutorial. So once you've done that, I'm going to go straight at it and then I'm going to remove um, this particular header from the app.js and save. Let me restart the server. But while we wait for that to load, let's take a look at the JSON placeholder, which is the API we're going to be looking at today, where we'll be looping data. On the table. Before I go further, let me just give you a brief update of what JSON Placeholder is about. It's a free API for testing and prototyping. It's powered by the JSON server and low DB, and it serves a lot of people. And from what we see here, about 1.8 billion requests each month. So we are part of the people who will be making requests this month. So for what we're doing today, under the resources, we'll be making all use of the slash post endpoint. So if I click on this you see a list of 100 posts as you can see we are getting data in, in, on a list of 100 posts and each data has um a key and and a value so we have a user id we have the key with the id the key with the title and also the key with the body so we'll be making use of this particular url and implementing it in our code base so yeah like i said our react server has loaded up and it has a blank page so what we can do is create a new file let me quickly do that i'm just gonna call it um in fact let me create a folder called components and then a file called what can i call this Let's just call this boot stable. That's JS. So we can generate a boilerplate by typing RAFCE. This is coming from a plugin in React. Probably let me show you. I think I did this in one of my videos, but let me let me show you again. So you search for React. Yeah, I think this is it. The ES7 React Redux, Redux GraphQL React Native Snippet. So once you install it, it has millions of downloads. You have access to those um, short codes, which help you generate boilerplate templates. So now that we've done that, to show that our code is working, I can just type um, H, H2. Let me create a new tag. 
call it a um a, a new suit and i'll call it tables and then export it let's import it inside our app.js file so to do that you can just say import boot table from so we're moving outside into the components and into the boot table file so you can just call that inside our class and inside our dva so let me paste that and then save so we have tables which is perfect so next thing is um we need to do is to display the data from the api so to do that we'll be making use of of um, react hooks to call the data so the first one is the first the the two we'll be making use of is the use effects and also the use states so under the use effects let's let's bring them in use effects and then use states And also, since we're making use of Axios, let me import Axios, import Axios from Axios. And also, we're making use of React Bootstrap. Let's also do that now. Let's just do import React Bootstrap. Which imports um, as React Bootstrap. from react bootstrap i think that's all we need to import so we can work on the main code itself so the first hook we'll be making use of is the use states we'll be using this to declare our variable and our function so we'll be declaring a variable so we are assuming the post are in form of blocks so i'm going to be calling this post which is a variable and then the function will be set post all is equals to use states and then we're gonna give it a default value of blocks which is gonna come in form of an array i think that's perfect then the next step we need to take is to call the next hook which is the use effect the use effect help us to load um, anything which is called within it when the page uh, as at when the page loads so it's quite a very very important um element in react so what we can just do is we're making use of um, async await syntax uh, so let me just create the variable to fetch the post list so i can just say fetch posts let's spell that correctly yeah fetch post list which is equals to a sync then an arrow so open the curly brace brackets and then another es6 syntax we're going to be using is um, the data destructuring format of declaring variables so i'm just going to open a bracket and then call it data and here we can await the data we are expecting so i can just call axios then the url of the api we want to call the post so we can display all this in our console at first so let me paste that here it's gonna be inside a quote then what we can do next is to set the posts which is something uh, the function we declare here so i can just say set posts and then set the data for the posts into this block we declared in the use state so what i mean is I'm just gonna do blocks so that blocks taking our data 
which takes in the data. So let me console log the data and see if um, we we can get the data. But first, we need to call our variable, which is um, first post list, and then use effects as um, an array here, yeah? something like an array. So we are going to inject the set post here. This is to prevent any form of side effects and warning in the console. And I, I think it's also very important to do this. So to can just console.log the data and see if this works. So let me save and open the console. Yeah, as you can see, we now have a list of the hundred posts coming from the API in our console. So that is a fantastic step. So um, I think the next thing we need to do is to um, to display our table, which comes from React Bootstrap. So going to documentation, under the getting started, I can search for table. So I'm going to take the simplest table I can find in this documentation. Uh, over time, I know we'll look at more complex tables, but for now, let me just take this. Okay, let me copy that. And then let's paste it in here. So we're gonna replace the table with React Bootstrap. So we're gonna say something like, okay, React Bootstrap dot table. And also in the closing tag, React Bootstrap dot table. So let's save and see if this displays in the browser. Okay, that is great. So one thing we also need to do, we are not having access to the CSS. So let me go back and then let's import. We, we need to import the, the main file for the CSS. So let me import that and then put that in our index.js, which is here. And also in the app.css, I want to apply some margin to the app class. So I can just say margin 20px. I think that should be enough. Let me save that. And let's see the changes we make in the browser. Yeah, as you can see, our table is displaying properly so i think the final thing we need to do is to look through the data coming from our api here in the console and then display it in the table and i think we should always call it a day so quickly let's prepare a table for that so what we can do is um the table header let's name them properly so we're gonna be having an id an id a title and a body so this is going to be id this is also going to be title okay and this is going to be body i didn't spell the title properly it's, it's okay then the body um Quickly, let me increase the font size of what I'm doing here. So I believe you can see much more clearly. So this is the ID, the title and the body. Then for the table body here, I will need to remove some because I'm looking through it. Yeah, I think let me save and see if there are no errors in the browser okay we don't have any errors so what we can do next let me remove this what we can do next is to loop through the body of the data table so to do that when open since we are dealing with jsx here when open this um bracket here so I can say posts, which is a variable we declared earlier on top. When we go, when we scroll up, we see this post, we declared it in the use state. So we can just say post dot 
blogs and post.blog.map which is an i order array that helps us to loop through a a an array so we can just say item then call the arrow and then open a bracket so we can now put the table row within the within where we are looping through the data so it's gonna be here okay so after doing that yeah insert a key here this is mainly to prevent error and also for performance issues because sometimes the the data can change so it's good to always have a key to track the data you'll be displaying so, so that's why we're having a key attribute here so item.id and also in the table body instead of um instead of mark here you can just do item.id Then auto here, you can just say item dot title, and finally you can do item dot body here. Yeah, I think that should work. Let's save and see our result in the browser. Yeah, there you go. We have the result of our API showing properly on the react bootstrap table so from an api in the json place to the api so for now i know this is simple and easy but i believe it's the best place to start over time there are so many packages npm packages on data table out there that i have seen and i'll be touching at least for the next three to four videos so we're gonna learn a lot on how we can filter from an api i don't know the api i'll be using it may still be the json place holder, but for now just have it in mind i'll be touching on data tables for the next few videos i'll be doing probably three or four videos i'll be doing this is going to be on data tables so thank you very much for staying tuned for this particular one i hope you're able to learn one or two things and i will see you next time